Perfectísimo. You're here. You're a part of our show. Chuck E. Cheese's, a place known by generations of people for its family fun. You guys really seem to enjoy the Madison video, so today I'm doing a city with even more history involving Chuck and Billy Bob. The vote on my channel made it very obvious which city you guys wanted to hear about next. And of course, the city I'm talking about is none other than Memphis, Tennessee. The city of Memphis actually has some really cool history regarding Billy Bob and Chuck. So I'd like to talk about that today. Now I will not be including the Cordova location in this video because I kind of consider it its own area, but it could possibly be in a future history video. So without further ado, this is the history of Chuck E. Cheese and Showbiz Pizza in Memphis, Tennessee. Before we go over the history of how Chuck and his gang ended up in Memphis, let's talk about the history of Pizza Time Theater as a whole. The first Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time Theater opened on May 17, 1977 in San Jose, California. It was founded by Nolan Bushnell, who was also a co-founder of the video game company Atari. He wanted a safe place for families to go to enjoy Atari's latest arcade games, and with this, he combined the concept of a restaurant and animatronic entertainment. Now, it may come as a surprise to some of you, but Chucky actually made his debut in Memphis before Billy Bob, even though the showbiz locations are more well known. In summer 1981, it was announced that Chuck and his gang would be coming to Memphis. And in August 1981, the Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time Theater of Memphis, Tennessee opened its doors to the public. Memphis originally opened as a franchise location, franchised by Food Systems Inc., who also owned the rights to franchise Pizza Time Theaters in North Carolina and South Carolina. It was located in the Eastgate Shopping Center, which was also constructed in 1981. The Memphis Pizza Time Theater would take over the former spot of a Morrison's Cafeteria restaurant. This location was actually around one of the first 50 Pizza Time Theaters to open. Let's talk about all the things that this location had to offer. Also, just want to get this out of the way, but there's no photos of this location's exterior, but I'm sure it looked similar to other Pizza Time theaters. Now let's move on to the interior. First, there was a front counter where you could order things like pizza, sandwiches, you could make your own ice cream sundae, and they even offered beer. Along with this, there was a prize area called Jasper's General Store, where kids could trade in their tickets for prizes. Speaking of prizes, I actually own this Jasper T. Jowls Pizza Time Theater Plus, which originated from the Memphis Pizza Time Theater. As for entertainment, Memphis actually had an arcade room with over 70 arcade games and rides. There was a huge ball crawl that kids could climb around. An article also mentions that they had remote control cars. Haven't seen that at a Chuck E. Cheese before. Since Memphis was an early franchise location, they actually got their own unique tokens with Memphis, Tennessee on them. But everyone knows the real entertainment could be found in the showroom, where Chuck and his gang sang to guests in animatronic form. The Memphis location opened with a stage set up known as the Balcony Stage, and actually had an early version of it. From left to right we have Mr. Munch, Jasper T. Jowls, Chuck E. Cheese, Harmony Howlett, and Pasquale the Chef. These types of Chuck E. Cheese animatronics were called Cyberamics and ran on pneumatic air. 
along with the Warblitz, a set of three birds who sang backup vocals for the main band. Also, there was this clapperboard thing in the corner of the showroom with animal hands that clapped after each song. There was also another board present in the showroom called the Bandboard. It featured various musical instruments playing themselves along to the show tapes. The showroom was also surrounded with these flag wavers that waved along to the songs being played by the band. In this photo from Memphis's grand opening, you can see the balcony stage didn't have any backdrops when the store first opened. But in later pictures, you can see the Wild West themed props and backdrops were added to the stage, going along with Harmony's Wild West theme. Speaking of Harmony, she's what we call a Pizza Time Theater guest star. Essentially, every once in a while on the stage, the female character would be swapped out for a different character. I believe Harmony Howlett is the first guest star the Pizza Time Theater in Memphis had, but they would later swap her out for different characters, but we'll talk about that later. But what if I told you there was another room in the restaurant that featured another animatronic? That's right, Memphis had none other than the king himself. The king was a very tall lion animatronic meant to resemble the musical artist Elvis Presley who had died just a few years earlier. He would sing Elvis's original songs and was located in a room called the Cabaret which offered additional dining for guests when the normal showroom was full. According to an article before the store's opening, most locations before Memphis had received another cabaret act called Dolly Dimples. She was a piano playing hippo who appeared at many Pizza Time Theater locations, but Memphis did not have her. Back to the article I mentioned, Memphis was one of the first locations to get a King animatronic instead of a Dolly animatronic. And of course, Memphis had the famous Chuck E. Cheese walk-around costume who would entertain kids at their birthday parties and participate in various events around Memphis. They probably had more walk-around characters than just Chucky, but I haven't seen pictures of any of the other characters at Memphis in costume form. The store's decor was probably pretty basic. I bet they had a few posters and maybe a couple adverts hanging up, but that's about it. The Memphis Pizza Time Theater was proven to be a massive success and was actually the first Pizza Time Theater or Showbiz Pizza Place in Tennessee. It's safe to say the Memphis Pizza Time Theater became famous from all around. As the store progressed into the early 80s, Memphis was still going strong. But soon, some changes would come. In 1983, Memphis would replace Harmony Howlett with Madame Oink. Chuck also got a new, updated vest since he had been wearing a prototype one since the store opened. Also in 1983, the Memphis Pizza Time Theater was bought back by CC Corporate. This meant it was no longer a franchise store, and CC Corporate could do whatever they wanted with the location. Memphis's franchisee originally only planned on selling their North Carolina stores, but later on decided that they were going to sell Memphis too due to poor sales. But according to this picture, Memphis would soon add a new character to their cast of animatronics. You may be asking, how does this show that Memphis got another character? It's just a picture of Chucky. We'll take a look at the background. If you have a good eye, you can tell that's the 1984 Helen Henney background. But in the picture I showed that was actually of Memphis, it appears Chucky switched back to his original best. But adding Helen Henney would be the last major change to happen at the Memphis Pizza Time Theater, as soon, something would happen that nobody wanted. Hey there, I just got an idea how to make Chuck E. Cheese's better than ever. Brand new pizza. Genius if I do say so myself. Popping with new natural toppings. All with lots of sauces and plenty of cheese. So while you're having fun rolling and winning, jumping and spinning, and laughing and grinning, we're in the kitchen making the best pizza in town. Chuck E. Cheese's is better than ever. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In early 1984, Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time Theater would file for bankruptcy. There were many reasons for this bankruptcy, but some include the video game crash of 1983, 
and Pizza Time Theater was expanding way too fast, often opening locations in very sketchy areas. But it seemed like Memphis was going to be fine, until they weren't. Memphis continued to operate throughout the summer of 1984, but in August 1984, we got some terrible news regarding this location. The Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time Theater of Memphis, Tennessee closed permanently after only three years in operation. Locals were very sad with this news, and I believe there's a few reasons on why this location closed, but the main reason was probably business went down after the showbiz locations opened in Memphis, which we'll talk about soon. But anyways, back to Chuck E. Cheese. The animatronics were turned off for the final time and auctioned off. All the games, rides, and other store equipment was auctioned off as well. Did any of you watching go to this auction? Do any of you know the people who got the stuff from the auction? If so, please let me know in the comments. But anyways, this marked the end for Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time Theater in Memphis, Tennessee. If you want to visit the former location, it's actually still there, but the buildings have obviously been renovated at the shopping center. I believe Plato's Closet took over the space that was once Pizza Time Theater, since it shares the same address that Pizza Time Theater had. Now I don't know how big Plato's Closet is, so it's possible Pizza Time Theater's former space was split among multiple tenants in the shopping center, but I'm not sure. But I think Plato's Closet would still be the main place where Pizza Time Theater was because it shares the address. If you want to visit a former Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time Theater, it's located at 5016 Park Avenue, Memphis, Tennessee. Now comes the part where we get to move on to a certain one tooth bear and all of his friends. Before we talk about the showbiz pizza places in Memphis, let's go over the history of showbiz pizza as a whole. The first showbiz pizza place opened on March 3, 1980 in Kansas City, Missouri, and became very successful. It was founded by Robert Brock, who wanted to make a better arcade pizza place with more advanced animatronics. Brock was a former Chuck E. Cheese's franchisee, but this time he teamed up with Aaron Fector for more advanced animatronics and showbiz pizza place was born. Like I said earlier, showbiz became very successful and expanded a lot throughout the 80s. Showbiz remained a family icon until their demise in the early 90s, but we'll talk about that later. For now, let's get back to Memphis. In this chapter, I'll be talking about both the showbiz pizzas in Memphis, and I'll try my best to thoroughly explain each of them. Although they had a lot in common, there were some differences that I'll try to dive deeper into. Without further ado, let's get into it. On August 24th, 1982, the first showbiz pizza place in Memphis, Tennessee, also known as the Hickory Hill location, opened its doors to the public. It was located in the Hickory Ridge Crossing Center. This location was originally franchised and was owned and operated by the McBiz Corporation, who also owned many other CC locations that you may know about. The location was pretty much an immediate success and gave families the place they had been waiting for. So, what all did Hickory Hill have to offer when it first opened? Well, let me tell you. I'm not sure what the location's exterior looked like because there's no pictures from this time, but I believe it would have looked similar to most other showbiz pizza places. When the store first opened, it probably featured a few advertisements around the store, as well as these red, yellow, and orange patterns along the walls. There was a huge arcade game room, with many classic games that you all would probably be familiar with. 
They apparently had a really good arcade game selection, so good that kids wouldn't even want to go eat and would just continue playing the games. They had many classics like Space Invaders, Pac-Man, Galaga, among others. And of course, they had the all-time classic, Skee-Ball. There was an area for young children called Billy Bob's Barnyard, which featured a playground with a slide and many kiddie rides. This area included the legendary Billy Bob merry-go-round. And I'm assuming it also had the musical Ferris wheel with Billy Bob on it. Oh yeah, and there was a huge ball pit. At the front counter, you could order various different foods, such as pizzas and sandwiches. Oh, and at this showbiz pizza, whenever you ordered food from the menu, you would actually get free tokens with your food. There was also a salad bar for guests who wanted a healthier option. There were also dessert options, such as cotton candy and ice cream. And of course, like any other showbiz pizza, they had the Billy Bob mascot costume. But everyone knows in the showroom, where the kids celebrated their birthday parties, is where the real entertainment could be found. None other than the Rockafire Explosion. The Rockafire Explosion was an animatronic band that was present at Showbiz Pizza Place locations from 1980 to 1992. Stage left featured Billy Bob Broccoli and Looney Bird working at Smitty Super Service Station. Center stage featured Mitzi Mozzarella, Beach Bear, Fast Geronimo, and Duke LaRue. Antioch the Birthday Spider, who hid behind the cloud, props on the stage. Mr. Sun and Mr. Moon, who sang backup vocals for the band and hid behind the forest backdrops on the stage. And of course, Choo Choo the Bear Cub. And on stage right, we have my favorite Rock of Fire character, Rolf the Wolf, along with his puppet Earl Smurl. And yeah, that's pretty much everything the Hickory Hill Showbiz Pizza Place had to offer when it first opened. But little did locals know, another Showbiz Pizza was already being planned for Memphis. On August 7th, 1983, the second showbiz pizza place of Memphis, Tennessee, also known as the Austin P location, opened its doors to the public. This location gets its name because it used to be located in what was once called Austin P Plaza. Oh yeah, and the plaza is located on Austin P Highway in Memphis, so that's where the name comes from. This location was also franchised by the McBiz Corporation and featured many of the same attractions that the Hickory Hill location featured. Like Hickory Hill, there's no photos of this location's exterior when it was a showbiz pizza, but it probably looked like other locations, so let's move on. When the store first opened, they hired 75 employees, and the store itself costed $1.2 million to build. They of course had a front counter where you could buy merchandise, Exchange your tickets for prizes and order some yummy pizza. There was also a salad bar. Like Hickory Hill, they had a huge arcade room with over 60 arcade games and rides, probably many they had in common with Hickory Hill. I'm not sure what specific games Austin P had to offer when they first opened, because there's not as much documentation on them as there is on Hickory Hill, but it's safe to say they had some games you've probably heard of before. And I'm sure they had the same showbiz pizza kitty rides that Hickory Hill had. And they too, I'm assuming, had a ball pit like Hickory Hill. Obviously, they also had the Billy Bob mascot costume that would come out during kids' birthday parties and celebrate with them, and also participate in other events around Memphis. And of course, they featured the classic Rock of Fire Explosion show that Hickory Hill also had. The Austin P showbiz turned out to be just as successful as the Hickory Hill location, with lines going out the door just to get inside the restaurant. Sorry if I didn't go too in-depth on the Austin P location, it's just because they featured mostly the same things that the Hickory Hill location had to offer, and I don't want to repeat myself. Both showbiz pizzas of Memphis dominated the early 80s, with more success to come soon. Sometime in the mid-80s, both locations introduced teen nights, where teenagers could come in and hang out and dance. Now this is really interesting. In 1984, both Memphis Showbiz Pizzas had temporary petting zoos. It just sounds really cool, and I really wonder how that worked at Showbiz Pizza. 
Also by the mid-80s, both Memphis showbiz pizza places started decorating their animatronic stage shows for Christmas. It looks really nice and just goes to show how much they cared about their animatronics back in the day. And while this isn't confirmed, I think because other Tennessee locations had him, I believe it's likely that the Memphis locations could have had Uncle Clunk, or maybe even his rare Santa retrofit. Also, I just want to mention when Pizza Time Theater went bankrupt in 1984 and Showbiz Pizza Place bought them and the companies merged, this did not affect the Memphis Showbiz Pizza Places at all, as they were still doing really good. But as the late 80s approached, some changes were going to happen at the Memphis Showbiz Pizza Places, but nothing major. Where can a kid kid around? Really? Where can he act? like a clown Billy. oh what a face there's just one place for a silly billy like you come to show this pizza you can turn it loose make them laugh have some fun be a silly goose you're a kid shout it out that's what we're all about In the late 1980s, both Memphis showbiz pizza places got something known as the 1988 remodel. This remodel included painting those iconic red, blue, green, and yellow checkers all around the restaurant, and adding parody posters that featured the characters in the showroom. Which, funny enough, the Memphis locations got a set of parody posters that featured the Chuck E. Cheese characters, even though neither of them had become Chuck E. Cheese yet. And since the Memphis locations got these remodels, I'm pretty sure that means they got the new Showbiz Pizza logo as their exterior signs, but I'm not sure. But I'm thinking probably. As for changes to the animatronic stage, both locations got the Smitty's Super Service Station backdrop removed and replaced with the Showbiz Pizza campground theming. Both Memphis locations also gave their Mitzi's MSU cheerleading outfits. It was also around this time that the Chuck E. Cheese mascot made his debut at the Memphis locations, although they had not become Chuck E. Cheese yet. All of these changes didn't really affect the locations, as going into the early 90s, they were both still very successful. There's actually footage of Hickory Hill in 1990 that shows a lot of footage of their Rock of Fire explosion show, and shows Mitzi in her unique outfit. This was soon after the late 1980s remodel, and the animatronics on the Rock of Fire Explosion show actually appear to be in really amazing condition. I love just watching them perform. The Hickory Hill footage also shows many other attractions, games, and rides the location had to feature back then as a showbiz pizza. This includes the ball pit, a hot air balloon ride, this red car ride, this game where you knock out a clown's teeth, a train ride, the Pirate Treasure Arcade game, Ski Ball, of course, and the well beloved Billy Bob Carousel. But soon, locals would find out that Chuck was going to have a much longer stay in Memphis. Within the Showbiz Pizza Time Company, things were starting to go downhill. You see, Showbiz Pizza Time Inc., the merged company, wanted Aaron Vector to give up the rights to the Rock of Fire explosion. Since Aaron had created the Rock of Fire, and Showbiz Pizza Time Inc. did not plan on compensating Aaron for the rights, he refused. This meant that some major changes were going to have to happen within the company. Changes that'll make any Showbiz fan cry. Concept Unification 
Concept unification was a process where Showbiz took the Rockafire characters, stripped them down to their mechanisms, made them the Chuck E. Cheese characters, and gave them new positions on the stage. Earl Smurl got removed completely, and Rolf the Wolf was replaced with Chuck E. Cheese himself. Duke LaRue was replaced by Pasquale the Chef. Fats Geronimo became Mr. Munch. Beach Bear became Jasper T. Jowls. Mitzi Mozzarella became Helen Henny. Billy Bob was removed altogether and most likely used for spare parts on the other animatronics. Looney Bird got retrofitted into Pizza Cam. The Sun became the character Mr. Building, but interestingly, Mr. Moon stayed behind. And last but not least, Antioch the Birthday Spider got removed and replaced with the Wink. Oh, and how could I forget, Choo Choo the Bear Cub became Munch Jr. On the exteriors of the locations, the signage was changed from Showbiz Pizza Place to Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza. And obviously inside the restaurant, any remnants of Showbiz Pizza branding or of its characters was removed and replaced with Chuck E. Cheese's branding. Both locations got a new Chuck E. Cheese costume featuring his tuxedo outfit. According to this photo, apparently one of the Memphis locations got a 1991 Jasper walk-around costume. I remember hearing it was Austin P, so I'm pretty sure that's where this photo was taken. Some Chuck E. Cheese themed games and rides were added, such as Chuck E. Cheese Roll, which was pretty much just skee ball, and that iconic Chuck E. Cheese carousel. Also during this time, the ball pits were replaced with a new playground called the Ball Crawl, which pretty much was just the ball pit, but it added tubes to it. As for decor, the locations probably didn't see too many changes, but I imagine they added those iconic wall planters and Chuck E. Cheese oil paintings. Also in 1991, a new no-smoking policy was implemented at both Memphis locations. In 1993, both Memphis locations got the updated Chucky walk-around costume. The Memphis locations probably had other outfits for their Chucky walk-arounds, like the USA Windbreaker. Also around the early 90s, both Memphis locations switched from the original Concept Unification organ front to the newer one. As the mid-1990s rolled around, the two Memphis locations were still going strong, but behind the scenes, a major change was about to occur. Remember when I mentioned earlier that both Memphis locations were franchised by the McBiz Corporation? On September 16, 1996, McBiz Corporation sold all of their Chuck E. Cheese's locations to corporate. This didn't have any effect right away, but this also meant that now corporate could do whatever they wanted to the Memphis locations. And to say that corporate was going to make changes is an understatement. I think it's pretty safe to say that Chuck E. Cheese was going through some major changes in the late 1990s. They were in the middle of an effort to make their restaurants cooler, to appeal to the kids of the 90s. And both Memphis locations were going to get new remodels to reflect this. Now I'm going to talk about Hickory Hills remodel first, because I feel like there's a lot more known about it than Austin Peay's. Now we don't have an exterior photo of Hickory Hill from this remodel, but I believe all they did was remove pizza from the name and add the new Chuck logo at the time. First off, if you look at this drawing I made, you can see that Hickory Hill actually expanded to the right of the stage area to add more games and seating. At Hickory Hill, they added new seating, new carpet, and loads of new games and rides. 
As you can see, loads of new posters and decor were added around the location. They added those record parody posters, as well as the prop shelves, which oddly enough were outside of the showroom. I say odd because usually, all of the parody posters and prop shelves are located inside the showroom next to the stage. Which to be fair, Hickory Hill did place some of their record posters inside the showroom too. Hickory Hill also added many new wall planters around the store. They also got this set of posters, which doesn't really have a name for the entire set. I just call the posters by their original names. The Elvis poster, Name That Cheese poster, Drive-In poster, Baseball Stadium poster, and Costume Feet Theater poster. In the back of this photo, you can see they got some of the postcard posters from 1991. To me, it looks like the Chucky Hollywood postcard and the Helen Big City postcard. And I know they also had the Pasquale Italy postcard. They added the Rolling Bone poster. You can see they added sports decor and magazine parody posters, along with large crayons along the walls. They also added many wooden signs around the store, some of them showing the Chucky logo present at the time. This is also the remodel that introduced those iconic sky tubes that we all remember climbing through as a kid. And of course, Hickory Hill had those famous rainbow lights running all around the store. Some notable games and rides Hickory Hill had during the Phase 3 era include Buster Bubbles, Chucky's Duckies, Sonic Championship, Air Hockey, Chatty Chucky, Nicktoons Racing, Jet Rider, and of course, the legendary Chuck E. Cheese Photo Ride. And yeah, that's pretty much everything that came with Hickory Hill's Phase 3 remodel in the late 1990s. Now you may be wondering, what about Austin P's remodel? You said they got one too. Well, I'll do my best to show you guys their remodel, but they don't have as much documentation as Hickory Hill does. Now shockingly, unlike Hickory Hill, we actually have photos of Austin P's Phase 3 exterior. They pretty much just added the new Chuck logo that was common at the time, and removed pizza from the store's name, and added those red and yellow awnings. But their interior is a whole other story. But we do have some photos though. Like in this one, you can see Austin P had the same postcard poster similar to the ones that Hickory Hill had. They had the Rolling Bone poster, some other posters that Hickory Hill also had, and got new rides and games. I noticed they had a lot of kitty rides, including the classic Chuck E. Cheese photo ride, the kinda scary Teletubbies ride. If you look closely in that photo, you could actually see the Chuck E. Cheese's school bus ride. How awesome! If you look in the corner of this photo, unlike Hickory Hill, Austin P. actually had their showroom shelves next to the stage like most other locations. And that's pretty much it on Austin P's Phase 3 remodel. There were also some other things that happened, like new carpet, new seating, pretty much the same stuff that happened at Hickory Hill. I know they got new planters and probably had record posters like Hickory Hill, but like I said earlier, there's not much documentation on Austin P's Phase 3, so I kind of have to guess what they had. There's also an article from around this time where this guy named Ken Hoffman, who was sort of a fast food reviewer, went to one of the Memphis locations and tried out a chicken pizza. Oh yeah, and sometime in the late 1990s, both Memphis locations removed the In Pizza We Trust slogans on their winks. Now, let's talk about something you guys probably weren't expecting in this video. A competitor. Founded in 1989, Discovery Zone was a chain of indoor playground slash arcade entertainment centers. They gained much popularity throughout the 90s, but by the end of the decade, they weren't doing so well. Now I know you're probably confused on why I just brought up Discovery Zone, but you'll understand in a second. 
You see, when the Memphis Discovery Zone closed in 1999, it left many employees without a job and left many parents and kids disappointed when their birthday parties got cancelled. But Chuck E. Cheese came to the rescue. Both Chuck E. Cheese's locations in Memphis offered free tokens and discounted birthday parties to all the kids whose birthday parties got cancelled at Discovery Zone. The managers at the Hickory Hill Chuck E. Cheese also offered new jobs to the employees at Discovery Zone who lost their own. Honestly, shout out to CEC. This was a really wholesome thing to do, especially for one of your competitors. As the early 2000s rolled around, more changes started to happen at the Memphis Chuck E. Cheese locations. For starters, at both locations around 2000, all of the animatronic characters' latex, masks, and other costume pieces were replaced with plastic versions as a cost-cutting measure. Hickory Hill upgraded to Jasper's flying cheese guitar, while Austin P. continued to use Beach Bear's guitar. Austin P. also removed their Munch's Make Believe band sign around this time. The Pasquales at both locations also got this new drum front. Sometime in the 2000s, Pizza Cam and Munch Jr. were removed from both Hickory Hill and Austin P. due to wear and tear. And in the 2000s, both Memphis locations replaced their Chuck E. Cheese animatronics tuxedos with Cool Chuck outfits. Along with this came new Chuck E. Cheese walk-around costumes featuring the new Cool Chuck outfit. Oh yeah, and ticket munchers were added to both locations in the early 2000s. Throughout the rest of the 2000s, the Memphis locations mostly stayed the same, only getting some new games and rides. Sometime in the mid-2000s, both Memphis locations got new short fur Chucky walkarounds, which introduced the Avenger outfit. Then in the late 2000s, both Memphis locations got the Avenger outfits for their Chucky animatronics, with Hickory Hill getting the full outfit and Austin P. just getting the Avenger shirt. The Ticket Blaster was added to both Memphis locations around 2010. And in 2011, both Memphis locations switched from Coca-Cola to Pepsi. Both Memphis locations seemed to be doing good, but a big change was about to happen as the 2010s rolled around. I want to make you a promise. When you walk into Chuck E. Cheese's, I promise fun. You know what fun is. It's games, hot pizza, laughter, smiles, all that great stuff. What isn't fun? Paying too much. That's where my new value menu comes in. Great deals for any size family, starting at $19.99. It's more fun for less. I promise. Here, we can shake on it. Ah. In 2012, Chuck E. Cheese redesigned their mascot into a new, hip, rock star mouse. This change wouldn't immediately affect the Memphis locations, but as you'll see, it soon took its toll. Now this chapter is probably going to be a sad one, so might want to have a box of tissues on hand. But on April 1st, 2013, the Chuck E. Cheese's on Austin P. Highway closed its doors forever. As crazy as it is, they actually closed on April Fool's Day, but I can assure you, this was no April Fool's joke. But anyways, the closure happened and there was nothing anybody could do about it. All of the locals were left without a Chuck E. Cheese and would have to travel to the Hickory Hill location. Now you may be asking, why did the Austin P. location close? Well, I have a few possible options. Option 1. The store's rent increased and CC and Austin P. Plaza couldn't work out a deal. Option 2. Austin P.'s lease expired and CEC flat out decided not to renew it. They've been known to do this with other stores. Option 3. Chuck E. Cheese was going through some major changes at the time. And Austin P. was just too outdated for corporate's liking. And Option 4. Austin P. was starting to underperform and not do as well because Hickory Hill was the more popular store in Memphis. 
What's even sadder is that when you realize Austin P would have celebrated their 30th anniversary that year since opening as a showbiz pizza place. I also found this photo of Austin P just six days before it closed, and the showroom is packed. I wonder if CC regretted closing this location, because it looked like it was doing really good. The three-stage animatronic show was taken down and removed. All of the games, rides, posters, and other store equipment was taken out as well. Although I'm pretty sure the three-stage animatronics and some of the games and rides probably made their way over to Hickory Hill for parts. But this marked the end for Chuck E. Cheese's on Austin P. Highway. If you want to visit this location today, the building that Chuck E. Cheese's was housed in is actually still there, but it is now a city trends. To get to the former location, it is located at 3268 Austin P. Highway, Memphis, Tennessee. That was once Showbiz Pizza Place and Chuck E. Cheese's. Something new at Chuck E. Cheese's. This game? New. And that one? New, new, new. There's always something just for you. It's Chucktober at Chuck E. Cheese's. Every kid who comes in wearing a costume gets 50 free tickets. That's enough tickets to get these cool vampire teeth. Plus other giveaways. All Chucktober long at Chuck E. Cheese's. Ask your parents to go to ChuckEcheese.com and you can plan your next visit to Chuck E. Cheese's together. Where a kid can be a kid. In 2013, when Austin P. closed, Hickory Hill remained open and was still an outdated Phase 3 store. And by outdated, I mean outdated by corporate standards. In my opinion, I think the store still looked really good, but it was outdated to CDC corporate standards. In summer 2013, Hickory Hill got the new Rockstar Chuck E. Cheese walk-around costume. The three-stage animatronic show still looked to be in really good condition up to this point, with all the characters moving really nice and smoothly. In fall 2013, the Chucky animatronics hat was removed in order to look like the new Rockstar design. But when 2014 came around, Rockstar Chuck was really going to take over Hickory Hill. In fall of 2014, the Hickory Hill Chuck E. Cheese's got a new remodel, known as Phase 5. This remodel included new exterior signs, the sky tubes were removed, a lot of the walls were painted purple, new booths were added, new carpet was added, an assortment of posters and artwork featuring the new Rockstar Chuck E. Cheese design. A new toddler zone, which oddly enough featured the older, Avenger-era Chuck E. Cheese characters on it. The showroom walls and balcony seating area was removed. But the most interesting thing is, they actually kept the three stage during the Phase 5 remodel. You see at the time, Chuck E. Cheese was producing a stage called the Circles of Light stage. And the version of the stage being produced at the time did not feature any animatronics. And seeing that Chuck E. Cheese was starting to remove older stages at this point, it's honestly a shocker that Memphis's three stage didn't get replaced with the newer stage setup. Therefore, this made Hickory Hill the only Chuck E. Cheese's location in the entire world to feature both the three stage and the Phase 5 remodel. As the mid-2010s rolled around, the Hickory Hill Chuck E. Cheese mostly stayed the same, although occasionally it would get new games and rides. Some games they had during this time include Chuck E. Cheese's Sketchbook, Alley Roller, which is just skee-ball, NFL 2-Minute Drill, and Guitar Hero Arcade, among others. Unfortunately, around this time, Hickory Hill replaced their classic Chuck E. Cheese photo ride with the newer Rockstar one. Around 2017, tokens were removed from the Hickory Hill location in favor of the new at the time Play Pass card system. Sadly, in the late 2010s, the animatronics started showing their age. The Jasper animatronic lost his hat. And I mean, just look at Pasquale in this video. He looks so sad, and like a technician hadn't worked on him in a really, 
really long time. This location also reportedly became a hot spot for crime, with items such as phones, purses, and other valuables being stolen there. But as 2020 came around, things were just going to get worse for this location. This is going to be another really sad chapter, so might want to go grab that box of tissues from earlier. As we all know, in March 2020, the coronavirus pandemic took the world by storm, and Chuck E. Cheese had to temporarily close all of their locations. Then in summer 2020, Chuck E. Cheese filed for bankruptcy for the second time in their history. This resulted in many of the company's locations closing that summer. But Hickory Hill stayed strong, and they reopened in either late summer or early fall 2020. Then October 2020 came, and little did folks know this will be their last time celebrating with Chucky. E. Because on October 27, 2020, the Chuck E. Cheese on Hickory Hill Road closed its doors. I don't know why they decided to close this location. Maybe a loss of money, a lease disagreement, or maybe the crime rates. With some sources even going as far as saying Memphis was the most dangerous city in the United States. Hopefully I'm not upsetting any Memphis residents. I'm only talking about certain parts of your city that are bad. Not the entire thing. But anyways, most locals were really upset at the news of Hickory Hill's closure, as it had been a staple of the city of Memphis for nearly 40 years, and now all of that was going to waste. Or was it? You see, after Hickory Hill closed, it left Madison as the last three-stage animatronic show in Tennessee. And seeing that Madison got a random shipment of three-stage parts and walk-around parts pretty much immediately after Hickory Hill's closure, I believe it's likely that Hickory Hill lived on through Madison's stage in parts. Some additional parts were also sent to the Savannah, Georgia location, including Chucky's Avenger shirt. But back to Hickory Hill, the front signage was taken down and dumpsters were set outside the location where games, posters, and other equipment were thrown away. Marking the end of the Chuck E. Cheese on Hickory Hill Road. If you want to visit this location today, after the closure it was quickly converted into a Crazy Hot Deals discount store and there may even be some Chuck E. Cheese remnants. For starters, the original red Chuck E. Cheese doors are still there. Additionally, a lot of the walls inside the store are still painted purple from CEC. And the most interesting remnant of all, the three stage is still there, although everything has been gutted including the animatronics, props, and anything worth taking, but there's a tarp in front of the stage so you can't really see it. For those of you planning on visiting this former location, it is located at 3649 Hickory Hill Road, Memphis, Tennessee. That was once Showbiz Pizza and Chuck E. Cheese's. Happy birthday! Cool! Thanks, Mom! Whoa! Happy birthday! Want the coolest birthday ever? Introducing birthday parties with unlimited games. While we did lose Chuck the e. locations in Memphis, tickets, a new Chuck E. Cheese could open the there sometime in the play. future. If you happen to be in the Memphis area, there is a Chuck E. Cheese location only 20 minutes away in Cordova. Although it is a 2.0. Before I end this video, I just want to say thank you to all of my subscribers, likers, viewers, everyone. We recently reached over 1,000 subscribers, and I couldn't have done it without you guys. As I'm finishing recording this video, the Madison History video is already at 10,000 views, so it's very obvious you guys like these style of videos. Let me know in the comment section which location you would like me to cover next. Also in the comments, let me know any fun memories you have from any of the locations I talked about in the video, or if you own anything from them. 
Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe, like, share, and comment. And until next time, bye for now. Share and treat each other fair.